All right, everybody, welcome to BO Boys for Monday, November 20th. F it, it's a raw feed. We're doing it live. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. And Clayton, huge episode, big results from big releases this weekend. But we have big news from Wanna BO senior intern Christopher. He texted me something today that was shocking, blew my mind. And We've got him on the show today. He he rushed on air from his, you know, family holiday vacation. So welcome to the show, Wannabe O Senior Intern Christopher. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here as always. So Christopher, uh, thanks for coming on last minute because we wanted to, uh, 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 to, to sort of bombard Clayton unsuspecting <laughs> with this news. And what get his honest be? reaction, because <laughs> if Clayton uh, Clayton's reaction needs to be recorded for the masses to see ha- to see what he says when you tell him this news. So, Christopher, could you tell Clayton what did you do yesterday? So, Clayton, yesterday from one thirty p.m. to eleven fifty p.m., I was at my local Regal because I saw four movies in a row. Wow. Okay. Now, was this a sneak around situation or no, was uh, this you booked every ticket? Yeah. I uh, I also once I got a uh, like thing from the Marvels too. I got the tin cans of popcorn for because that was the first movie I saw. So yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So you have the you have the Regal uh, subscription. I have the AMC subscription, but not all the movies I want to see are were at my AMC, and the AMC is like fifteen minutes away. So I just uh, plotted like my day at Regal. Wow. So wait, okay, we we've got it. We've got to break this down. And listen, uh, listeners, we're gonna get to these new movies. We're gonna get to a plow. We're gonna go over the results, but. <laughs> Did you buy four different tickets yesterday or did you buy one ticket and then just hang out for the day? You bought four tickets. I Well, I, so I actually only bought three because by the time I needed my fourth one, I had gotten enough like regal points because I'm like a rewards member where I could get a free ticket. So I actually wow. only had to get Wow. <laughs> wow. So over the course of the day, you earned enough regal points to make a purchase that day. I already had some, but yeah. Okay. Uh, incredible. So that mm-hmm. that's something they don't account for, is that someone in the theater will be earning money mm-hmm. and get yeah. something for free later that same day. That doesn't mm-hmm. figure into their accounting. So, not. so Clayton, now, was this a blockbuster announcement or what? Did, this is Yeah. This, I mean, yeah. that harkens back to our days of doing yeah. the full day movie sneaks back when we were young and, and careless. Your aisle. Yeah. Yeah. D- d- it does also show that I think that the, the difference in the generations, because we would sneak, we would, yes. we would buy one ticket. And when I say one ticket, I mean one ticket between the both of us because one person would buy a ticket and the other person would open an exit door to let the other person in. And then from there, we would then sneak into two or three additional movies. But uh, this generation, a lot more upstanding, a lot more honest. Christopher bought three tickets and earned points to get into a fourth one. So Christopher, what are the four movies that you saw yesterday? So I saw the Marvels, then the new Hunger Games movie, then Thanksgiving, and then uh, round of the day out with Next Goal wins. Wow! Did you walk out? Did you did you watch Next Goal wins to completion? Yes, I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how was your? uh, And you know, I know I'm asking this of of someone who's a direct report to me, so I got to be careful. How was your butt, Christopher? How was your? Uh, it was okay. I, I was feeling a little bit towards the end of the day. I'm not gonna lie. Right. Uh, I had to start getting creative with how I was sitting, but mm-hmm. overall, not overall, not terrible. Right. Would you recommend possibly if you did this again, bringing like a a, a donut? You know, one of those like hemorrhoid donut pillows, something like that, with you. Do you think that would have helped? Yeah, for sure. That, that and hindsight's twenty twenty. I. Uh, I didn't actually expect to watch Next Goal Wins. That was kind of one that was a last minute, so I wasn't fully prepared for it. So yeah. if I knew that, then I might have yeah brought something. 
Yeah. Did you point, eat all your meals in in the Regal yesterday? I did leave for 30 minutes to go eat dinner. But other than that, I, everything I ate was at Regal that day. Wow. Did you get like a hot dog, nachos? Did you get real food or you stuck to Goobers and Mike and Ike's for you? I had Goobers, Mike and Ike's. Um, I did. I'm 21, so I did enjoy a beer at one of them. They sell beer there now. Wow. Uh, yeah. Nice. Some soda. So, yeah. I, I, I had a variety throughout the day. What a day. So, could you give us your boots on the ground reporting? What were these crowds like at these four movies? Was the Marvels empty? No, actually, the Marvels, the most empty theater was Next Goal Wins, which mm-hmm. had only one other person. But then surprisingly, the one that had the most was Thanksgiving. Yes. Which actually had a theater that was at least like three fourths of the way sold out. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> so any big takeaways from you having seen these films? Like, do you understand? And we're going to get into the results why any of these movies did what they did. I mean, we'll go with the results. The next goal wins bombed. Hunger Games did okay. Marvel's obviously is a is gonna be an all time bomb. Um did did you do you understand having seen them why they're performing the way they are? No, with the Marvels honestly not as much. I really didn't think it was that bad. I know we're not mm-hmm. critics, huh? Huh. Uh, huh. Um I didn't really think it was that bad of a movie. And I think the crowd had a good time with it. That theater was about halfway full. The Hunger Games a little bit. It is definitely a little long. I didn't realize like until I was like booking the tickets that it was two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah. And you kind of do feel that a little bit. But yep. so I can kind of see that. Um, Thanksgiving. Honestly, I think that'll be that'll have great. Like, I think everyone in that theater had a really good time. And I thought that was a really fun horror movie and then yeah next goal wins i completely understand it's nothing you haven't seen before with that type of movie Mm -hmm. was the next goal wins hard to watch in the physical (laughs) and mental state that you were in your fourth movie because i mean clayton you think back to some of our epic movie sneaks and when you get to that fourth movie especially if it's the worst movie of the day i mean Mm -hmm. some of our epic movie sneaks we I think Parental Guidance with Billy Crystal was a, a late movie. Um, Here Comes the Boom with Kevin James may have been the closer on one of our epic movie sneaks. It's it's hard when the fourth one is the one you're maybe looking forward to the least. So it was mm-hmm. was Next Goal Wins a painful experience? I, le- I probably, that was a short movie, but I probably felt that one the most towards the end a little bit. Yeah. But I, I don't think the quality of the movie necessarily helped i feel like if there was i feel even if i saw the marvels at that time like i flip flop those two i think i still would have had a decent time with the marvels and mm. relatively the same experience with next school wins yeah it's when you're planning the epic movie day the 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 uh this the thing that you typically do is go to the ones you want to see the most first exactly but then, but then it's it there is if you if you plan it out correctly, you probably should leave maybe the first or second choice for the final movie, so that you've got something mm-hmm. to look forward to. But but human beings don't think that way. We we're mm-hmm. animals. <laughs> no, no. We go to what we want first. So Clayton, uh, you will get into more of Christopher's boots on the ground reporting as we talk about these movies. But Clayton, could you give us a plow for this epic sneak weekend of Friday, November seventeenth? Number one, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, made $44 million in its first frame. Number two, another newbie, Trolls Band Together, made $30.6 million in its opening frame. Number three, The Marvels, made $10.2 million, down 78%. It's at $65 million in its second frame. Number three, in a dead heat with Marvels. I'm sorry, number four, Thanksgiving. This, these could flip flop. 10.2 yep. in its first frame. Number five, Five Nights at Freddy's, $3.5 million, down 61%. It hemorrhaged 865 theaters. It's at $132.6 million in its fourth weekend. 
And if you're asking and curious, number seven, next goal wins, did not even cry macho. It's at 2.5, which I think Pat called 2.5 in its first frame. Wow. Uh, And, you know, in between those, number six was the holdovers. And I I mentioned this quickly to the great Scott Mendelson. He did not have a lot of time and energy to devote to the holdovers box office. But you know what? It's expanding. It beat out next goal wins his opening weekend. I still think that is a movie that could get if it gets the, you know, the the holiday boost as a family holiday movie. I still think that's a, a small movie that could get itself to 20 or $30 million at the box office. Next weekend's going to be key for the holdovers. Now, Guys, Pat, can I, yeah. can I quickly pat myself on the back here? Of course, go for it. Um, because I, but I please was... do it for the YouTube audience. Please okay. actually pat yourself. Yeah. So, um, I nailed this trolls number. I said 30, it hit yeah. 30. Yeah. As um, of Monday, I believe Thanksgiving will be number three and Marvel's will be number four because right now it's 10.2. I think DC, I mean, sorry, Walt Disney Mm -hmm. is going to always say this is hot. This is the where we are at at the highest sort of estimation. We saw it the first weekend. This will drop enough in the second uh, on Monday um, when the finals actually come in. And Thanksgiving will be number three because yeah. when you look at numbers, even though they have Marvels ahead of it, they are saying Thanksgiving is number three. So these are things that I uh, need to pat myself on the back for because I knew Marvels was dead in the water. Yeah, I mean, I, but n- none of us thought that the Marvels was this dead in the water because mm-hmm. we also did. And especially you uh, and Scott Mendelson, Clayton. I think you both thought Thanksgiving would do better than it did, you know, monetary wise. Yes. I said 15. Yeah. Yeah. So all of us sort of had the Marvels easily clearing double digits. I mean, the fact that this movie is, is currently 10.2 and may end up coming in under 10. This is stunning. I mean, it had the Morbius drop. It had Uh, another thing. It had a worse drop than Morbius. It had a worse drop, a record comic book drop. Wow. It's up there with, I, I think I saw the only other comic book movie that may have dropped bigger in its second weekend is Shaquille O'Neal's Steel. <laughs> is it is in that. It's in Morbius oh, wow. and Steel. That you don't want to be in a in the same sentence as Morbius and Steel. So you know? I, I found on Reddit, and we'll see how I mean this is probably pretty accurate because it was on box office Reddit. Right. But right. Um, they made a list of the biggest drops for movies that opened in over 3000 theaters and the Marvel sits right now at number three under oh Halloween God. ends and the Friday, the 13th uh, reboot in 2009. So that was number one. Halloween ends was number two. Then Marvel's guys. Oh, what wow. What is happening here? Because listen, we've all talked the last couple of weeks about all the reasons why the Marvel's, would open low why it did open low superhero fatigue and the shows and uh, all these reasons but this drop is unprecedented especially for a movie that the word once once people started seeing it was hey it's not that bad which is i mean that's what you said (laughs) christopher it's not that bad Mm -hmm. but People are fully rejecting this. I mean, next weekend, this movie may make like three or four million dollars over the Thanksgiving weekend. Like Mm -hmm. this movie is going to top out possibly under 80 million. It's at 65 million. I mean, maybe it gets to 80 or 85 million total. So why the 78 percent drop for a movie that. It wasn't reviewed as the worst movie we've ever seen. You know, it 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 seemed to be when people saw it, they said it was kind of fun. But a seventy eight percent because with Morbius, you get it. Morbius, everyone said it was terrible. Mm-hmm. But what happened with this Marvel second weekend? I think it's just not enough for these Marvel movies to be just okay. I, I don't think there's any room for this anymore because. I think you're just, this is the point where everybody jumped off the train. It's just the tipping point. And we thought this would be its first 
dis we we were looking at the marvels as this is going to be the first outright sort of failure right but we did right. not expect like you said the uh, the flop of this like yeah. how it it will not flop. make it will not make worldwide 200 million dollars no so like this thing will will be under 200 million dollars worldwide yeah and yeah. that is shocking like in we would have not called that uh, and i no, think it's no. this is mm -hmm. truly just everybody's jumping off the train at once because it's the perfect time to because this movie comes after secret invasion which everybody hated it stars a group of uh, characters that I don't think the general public cares about. And mm -hmm. there's so many alternatives for your attention right now that this sort of movie no longer has the imagination of pretty much anybody except for a very devoted few fans. Guys, I'm going to throw something out here and maybe talk me off a ledge here. This is the first time after seeing the second weekend of the Marvels where I think even something like Deadpool 3 isn't safe. Oh, no. I said that before. I uh, know. I think Deadpool 3 is totally fine. I think that's so disconnected from everything that Deadpool like that. There's such goodwill for the Deadpool movies. And I feel like there wasn't that goodwill for this Marvel movie specifically that I feel, mm -hmm. I feel like it's disconnected enough where that movie still like does Baffa Bobo. But here's the thing, Christopher, Kevin Feige, Kevin Feige got his little fingies. No, I don't. Deadpool three. And you know what? Mr. King Midas. Now he's King Midas in reverse. He's taking gold and turning it into shit. Believe me, Deadpool is going to be bogged down with some sort of connection to the X-Men, some sort of same bullshit that Deadpool used to make fun of. It's going to be another cog in this machine that people are ignoring. Now, it, it will be a hit. It will it, be a but hit. It, but it will not reach the heights of the first and second one. Uh, because I also think Ryan Reynolds has a shelf date and his sense of humor, which I've said previously, is that I do think the Ryan Reynolds thing is got to reach a point where everybody's sort of over his sense of humor. You think the Boost Mobile commercials are going to finally do some damage? I don't think he's not Boost. He was Mint, right? He was. Yeah, mint. he's Mint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I there's think still that, that confusion in the marketplace. I, I think that type of humor has an expiration date outside of Deadpool, but that's like Deadpool humor so i don't think it has an expiration date in the deadpool franchise okay the fact that we're having this conversation means there's a serious problem because if marvels would have done 500 uh, uh over you know overseas altogether yeah, yeah then we're like okay deadpool is going to do deadpool numbers but everything is up in the air now yeah it's 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 I, I mean i i do lean more i think christopher talked me off the ledge but there is something too when you look at a 78 percent drop for the marvels it's not just disinterest i do think there is becoming just an active dislike of the superhero genre they're you a know, joke they're yeah it's uh and it is a crowded marketplace i mean let's get into it and you saw this movie christopher Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes opened up this weekend on the lower end of the tracking range. You know, this is a mm -hmm. movie that was tracking like 40 to 60. And, you know, there was some outsized hope. Maybe it does do 65, 70 million, you know, really mm -hmm. breaks out. It did 44 million. Um, you know, you look uh, looking at some articles talking about the budget of this and they kept Lionsgate kept it moderately budgeted 100 million scott mendelson on twitter today talking about how this will end up making a profit you know as a single movie it should do okay but it doesn't look like this is a franchise starter for lionsgate no. and what, what was the audience reaction in the screening you saw christopher and this was you said your second of four movies right yeah second of four movies um I think it was pretty good. I actually have friends um, that are planning on going tomorrow already too. 
I, I know a lot of people that are genuinely interested in this. I think the Hunger Games was like a very big movie with like it was a big movie when I was a kid with all my friends. So I think that definitely does play a role. And I think this will have like okay legs too. Okay. Can, yeah. Can, can I throw a theory past you, Christopher? Because uh, you're 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 in that prime demo for this being sort of a nostalgia play. Mm -hmm. This weekend it's before the actual uh, holiday vacation, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. you still had all the frat boys and the co-eds that last weekend before they go home to see their old friends, they're throwing back a few mm -hmm. high noons, whatever, doing a little yeah. whatever you guys do, right. uh, hooking up, not to be crass, <laughs> yeah. hooking up before you're gone for a week. Mm -hmm. And they were focused on that. But when they go home, they're going to be hanging out with the people that they used to watch these movies with. And they're mm -hmm. going to see this movie with those people, not the new people there, you know, with, with right. you know. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. He did a yeah. cocaine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, wow. and look what I'm right. doing for the YouTube audience. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Podcast listeners, if you're not subscribed to YouTube, you're missing out on all of these hand gestures that Clayton is making. Yeah. Uh, he, he made the cocaine snort. And you can only see that on the B.O. Boys YouTube channel. Is there any validity to that, that this is sort of like not going to be front loaded here on this weekend for the college kids? Yeah, because also not all my friends are even home yet. Some don't get back until Monday or Tuesday. So some yeah. people are still at school. So I think this will have, yeah, going to Thanksgiving week and weekend, It'll I think it'll have some pretty decent legs. Yeah, I mean, for anything to be a Thanksgiving holiday hit, a big part of that is it has to be a family choice. And, you know, this movie could be that. It's got the brand name. You know, even Grandma and Grandpa remember Hunger Games from the last decade. You know, that you, you had to be living under a rock to not know the Hunger Games. So it's got the brand awareness. It's, I'm guessing it's not an R-rated gore fest. You know, no. there's probably action violence. So it could be the family choice. That two and a half hour runtime, and runtime has come up a lot in talking box office this year. Do you think that did, and obviously you were feeling every minute of it because you were already yeah. two hours into your movie day. Do we think that could negatively affect its family holiday box office potential? Like, you know, does grandma and grandpa and uncle Jed going to want to sit through two and a half hours when there are people who don't go to movies normally? I think it definitely, well, just with the planning aspect, because you have to plan like at yeah. least three hours out of your day to go do this probably more yep. so i think that could hinder it a little bit but not too because as we've seen plenty of times avatar the way of water most recently last christmas an over three hour movie and during christmas time and that was still an all family affair mm -hmm. so people figured out that figured that out so i think they could definitely figure this one out too if they want to yep this 44 million opening, if it doesn't leg out and if it isn't that sort of thing that I said where, you know, the the college kids are going to see it this week when they're home with their old friends. It's such in that limbo where we saw like Dungeons and Dragons mm. where, you know, open to 37, had decent legs, didn't make it to 100. And you're like, do you just throw this IP away? Do you just mm. put it in the closet for another 20 years or do you try to build on this sort of like modest success? And that's my fear with this is that it's just so close. If it made 55 and I know that's 10 million more, which is, you know, for a movie on a hundred dollar budget and for, I mean, a hundred million dollar budget and for a movie this long and all that uh, $10 million makes a big difference. But like, if it could have just made right. 50, 53, we'd be talking about this, like, all right, here we go. So it's I, I I wonder if that is going to affect people's perception of this movie, because, again, we have that perception with movies. We know with box office, if something's a stinker like Marvel's Marvel's was the Marvel's was a stinker and people stayed away in droves. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was like the Rotten Tomatoes score wasn't terrible. People said it wasn't that bad. But the stench of that box office drove people away. Now, 44 isn't stench. But when they see Marvel's being a, a big bomb and then this movie making a little bit less than that, 
they might be doing an apples to oranges comparison that they shouldn't be doing. And and that's what I worry about is coming right after the Marvels. This making less makes this look like a total bomb when it's not. It's two different situations. Yes, and you saw that a lot online. A lot of you know the remaining hardcore MCU defenders were doing the thing of look at how this headline framed the opening yeah. weekend of the Marvels versus how they framed the opening weekend of Hunger Games. Even though Hunger Games made less money. Of course, pretending budgets don't exist, expectations exist, yeah. don't exist, and all that. And I, I get it. If you're a hardcore Marvel defender, you got to grasp at these straws. Uh, yeah, go for it. Do do you? You have you have to do what you can. But I think either way, yeah, the Hunger Games opening weekend didn't break out. It does have the potential for big legs because it's got the Thanksgiving holiday. You know, Wish is coming out, which is a Disney family movie, though that has some bad, bad advance buzz on it. Yeah. So it, it and, you know, you got the Beyonce concert film opening the first weekend in December. But honestly, there's not a live action family movie until Wonka on December 15th. So Hunger Games does have a lane if it can become that, if it can become both a movie for you know, I would say teens and young girls to get really into it, like they did with Taylor Swift and Barbie, and for families over the next month who are looking for live action family fair. Um, but even even then, could this do a three or four times multiplier? You know, can it get to 125? Can it do four times it get to 160, 180? Mm -hmm. You know, that's asking a lot off of a forty-four million dollar opening weekend. Um, yeah. do, do the what is the interest, Christopher, in the Hunger Games from the college set? You know, d does your generation have a lot of affinity for the the Jennifer Lawrence franchise? And I mean, here's the big thing: do people care about the Hunger Games movies if Jennifer Lawrence isn't in the movies? Uh maybe not as much, but I do. Those movies were huge with all mm -hmm. my friends who are now like my age in college. Back when those movies came out, that was huge with us. Um, a bunch of my friends actually recently rewatched some of them because they were on Netflix. So I think that also kind of helps that it's fresh in some yeah. people's minds. But yeah, I do think this IP for our generation is kind of a big one. Mm -hmm. Is does this movie and obviously no spoilies on this episode, but does this movie feel like it is trying to backdoor set up a future series or does it feel like lions game made this one movie it's a standalone and obviously if there's a giant hit they'd want to do more but you know did, did was there any was there you don't have to tell us what they were but were there stingers in this movie for instance were, were they sort of like hey look who just walked in to the you know hunger games forest it's so and so no, there are no. So the, I think obviously they could always go the route of just like hopping around the time periods and just like showcasing different games. But this movie is a very, it feels like a singular standalone story with a beginning, middle and end. And they could always do more with this character, but it, it, there's no tease at the end to, for anything to continue. Isn't it? Isn't it something at the box office this last month that there's a Hunger Games movie? And there's a Josh Hutcherson, um, <laughs> you know, day and date, streamo and in theaters, you know, sort of see, you know, horror movie. And the Josh Hutcherson movie did almost double the opening weekend of the Hunger Games movie. I mean, that's got to feel good if you're Josh Hutcherson. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, so, yeah. Hunger Games, any any demos or anything else, Clayton, that, that you have on this opening weekend of the Hunger Games? I mean, I'm um, guessing this movie skewed very female. Oh, yeah. Women led the charge. 65% of the audience, which wow. is on par with Little Mermaid and Barbie. So that's good. 75% wow. between 18 and 34. All right. I, I I'm in the camp of don't write this movie off yet. Because of that, it's been a it's been the year of girl power at the box office. So if this becomes a thing that 
you know, the word of mouth is good and the girl power movement and the families go see it next weekend. Like I said, it's got a month where it's got this lane until Wonka. So I, I think this movie could still could still pull it together in the next couple of weeks, but we'll see. Next weekend's going to be well, big. The holidays are going to be big. Well, mm-hmm. you look at something like Ghostbusters Aftermath from 2021. After which, Afterlife. Aftermath. After life, I'm sorry. Is, that's uh, that'll be the last series. The last that's right. film in that series. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aftermath. Uh, that's uh, Afterlife. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Afterlife. <laughs> Aftermath is when they just clean up all the marshmallow at the end of the first movie. Yeah, so, uh, you know, this and Hunger Games pre-existing franchises and uh, open to identical numbers and after Afterlife made it to a, a 129.3. So I do think Ghostbusters maybe had a lot of older demos really driving that. I mean, that's something we talked about. So go listen to those mm-hmm. episodes back in the day. Yeah, uh, I, I think if this has the youth sort of pushing it, it's way better for theatrical yep yeah so so let's move on to trolls band together i mean this is the ultimate rats need their cheese situation i i had this movie opening around 20 i mean my thought was the first one was a giant hit because it had the big justin timberlake song the second one was a pbod release in spring of 2020 and i thought that maybe just tarnished the brand this thing opened up to 30 million it's probably going to do a hundred million domestic, you mm-hmm. know, if something like the bad guys gets itself to 91 million. This will, yeah, easily. This will easily do it. I mean, was this a consideration for you at all, Christopher, for your big movie day? Did you think maybe trolls band together is the, is the last movie? No, sadly, it's a little too, a little too young for me. And okay. uh, I'm not sure it's the best. I, I went to, that that last one by myself so i'm not sure it's the best look for me mm. like it would have been if for the taylor swift movie uh going by myself at like 9 30 yep. at night to a mm. trolls band together screening yeah yeah uh, th- this may have this would have been a worse look probably <laughs> yeah trolls band yeah, together I was, yeah. um i i kind of disagree okay explain uh, because uh, because i think adult i think um, uh, it is way more acceptable for adults to watch animation now mm. and i i still think the uh taylor swift demo with the young girls dancing around it's it's with cell phone cameras it's bad for christopher to be in that sort of area unless he has a buffer of right. a lot of like a gaggle of female friends Right, right, right. So I think for a kids movie, or, or it's a bunch the- of frat dudes, and you're there because, like, we're you know we wanted to see T Swift, you yeah, know, just ogle her, yeah, that type mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. So, or your big Travis Kelsey fans, and you want to represent right. your bro, or whatever. Yeah. Right, I, right. I think I think it's more acceptable for people. I mean, look at I know there's supposed to be high a higher level of entertainment, but the Pixar movies. I mean, there's adult there's adults mm. going to see these animated movies just to be like, Oh, look at the backgrounds and you know, like whatever they right, do, right, they try to be right. technical about that shit. So I do think, I mean, listen, it's still a level of like, I wouldn't want to see you caught there, but uh-huh. if you're caught there, it's better than you're uh-huh. caught out at Tay Swift by yourself. That's yeah, my yeah, thought. Yeah. So trolls it's a matter of degrees. So trolls band together. did it's 30 million. Does this do anything for Justin Timberlake? He's had it. He's had it. No, we don't think yeah. this, this, he could say, Hey, sure. All the Britney Spears stuff, but I just opened a movie to 30 million. You don't think he could go to the press with that tomorrow? No, he, he didn't open this movie. The trolls brand trolls opened this. Yeah. Movie. Trolls opened this. Movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And so this is, this is a movie that, I mean, the first one opened to 46, so it didn't, hit that but i mean like you were saying pat if it does what the original did which is like a three multiplier or so it could get to a hundred which is respectable and you can continue to make theatrical trolls movies yes yes if if they keep these budgeted correctly and i'm sure justin timberlake's quote probably goes down every movie at this point he i'm sure he's making less on this one than he did on the first one just based on where he is fame wise yeah. So you make that fourth one, th- this guy might be working for free. Um, the, did you this hear feels, any? 
Oh, Gulf sorry. War this feels very much like a train your dragon situation as mm. opposed to a Smurfs too, which we were, you know, with secret lives of pets that we were worried about where this felt like the sequel because like the PVOD one sort of doesn't count. So mm -hmm. this was truly the follow-up. And after a long layover, this thing still has power. So, I mean, we're looking at something that could have a train your dragon sort of life theatrically where you can have more than just two movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christopher, in your big movie day, I know you didn't see Trolls Band together. Did you hear any of it from any of the other auditoriums? Like in those four movies, did any of them share a wall with the Trolls screening where you could hear singing, you could hear kids, you know, restlessness, anything like that? No, I did not hear any of the Trolls Banding together, sadly. Well, I was at okay. The well, you know what? This overperformed. Rats need their cheese. And any time any of us make the mistake I made of underestimating a kid's movie, it's just how do we do that when yeah. that is one of the slogans of our show? Mm. Yeah. I've done uh, it, Pat. Don't worry about it. I've done it as well. So, and listen, we may make that mistake next week when we're predict uh, or next <laughs> episode, we're predicting this wish opening weekend. Well, I, I, I know, feel like though. we're both. I know we're doing it already. Yeah, but but it already. it's have their cheese, and the cheese is trolls. They the already have their trolls. cheese. The cheese is trolls. You're right. Uh yeah. Thanksgiving. Let's mm. talk Thanksgiving. Because I gotta say, I feel like I kind of nailed this one. I think I may have said 10. I think I said nine or 10. I was pretty low on this. And you know, I did put out there that this was not the weekend to open this movie. And obviously, you could open horror all year. It doesn't have to be just October, huh? But huh. there is... Uh. I do think this was a bad weekend because it is holiday time. And even more so than Christmas, Thanksgiving is the squeaky clean all-American holiday. Like, there, there is the precedent of leading it to Christmas. We're all going to get a little naughty. You know, people want to get a little <laughs> naughty. They want to be meta about Christmas. So you've got your, we've got a long history of Black Christmas. And last year, you or the year before, you had Violent Night. And we have these sort of like, let's get naughty around Christmas. But Thanksgiving, people do not want to get naughty. They don't want to, they don't want to ironically celebrate Thanksgiving. They just want to put on their, you know, best behavior and and just get through it with the family and i i don't think people wanted a big horror movie this weekend i mean it didn't bomb it made 10 million but it it made just a little more than your pope's exorcist and and those type of films it didn't really do you know even good slasher numbers so so i mean you guys tell me uh, do you think now that it's open that this was the right weekend for Thanksgiving. I do. Honestly, I think this is going to have good legs. And also, okay. the Horror Hounds Thanksgiving doesn't have its go-to horror movie yet. And this finally could be the one that get, for this time of year, there's those families that all, everyone loves horror. So I think that for that group mm. of people, this could be that the movie of choice for the next week. And like I just said, Halloween obviously has its horror movies. Even Christmas has its horror movies now. Easter has some hor horror movies. Valentine's Day does. There's no real mm. Thanksgiving horror movies, and this is finally one for those people out there. I agree fully with Christopher. This, you had to release it here. You mm. had to, like the, uh, you know, uh, like the pilgrims mm. who came and stake their claim i guess you know whatever listen i don't want to step in it pat you step aside christopher you, step aside. you have a bright yeah, future yeah. you have a bright future step aside step aside yeah what i'm saying is allegorically are not talking about the pilgrim <laughs> no. allegorically okay yeah. um somebody had to say i i'm taking this weekend as a horror weekend now with this franchise and this might have opened lower I do agree it's going to have legs, but Thanksgiving two, that's mm -hmm. the big one. Yeah. Okay. In two years because people love this movie. This, this, this Thanksgiving killer looks to be a new horror icon in the making. 
Wow. Not right okay. or anything. It does set. There is stuff to go on for a second movie. Not right. So anything. this will make enough money in the theaters. It will do well enough on streaming, which is the new VHS. Mm. So then when Thanksgiving two comes out in two years, that thing's going to have a huge opening. Okay. So it is staking a claim and it had to open on this weekend. Okay. So, so we think your, I, I like this theory. You think Eli Roth and the makers of Thanksgiving are, are basically almost taking a little bit of a hit for the future to establish mm -hmm. that a beachhead on Thanksgiving pre weekend or Thanksgiving weekend. Now that is a horror weekend and maybe that's Thanksgiving too. Maybe it's some totally other horror movie that they even have nothing to do with opens next year or the year after on Thanksgiving weekend. But this is the movie that did the work to make this a horror weekend. Cause we are seeing horror slowly take over the calendar. Yes. Where, it's, it's, I mean, it, you don't have September to September is now a horror yeah. weekend. And yeah. June yeah. is a horror, you know, June is always going to have a big horror movie. Who January, knew? February, big horror movie. Mm -hmm. Memorial day had a huge horror movie opening two years ago. Right. Right. Yeah. S Scream opens now in the spring. Yes. Yeah, Mar yep. Exactly. Yeah. So who, okay. who knew, who knew, that right. that all of these calendar dates could be horror dates. I mean, especially the September one, the prestige one that right. has been going for years and years now that we all take for granted. Mm -hmm. I do think this is like you said, Pat, this is a beachhead. This is breaking ground on a new sort of, hey, we can we can murder here, too. We OK, can murder here, too. So, Christopher, the you know, because with horror. You strike gold when you have that horror icon villain. Obviously, Terrifier, Terrifier 2, Art the Clown. He's now sitting at the table with Freddy, with Jason, with the nun, possibly. possibly like we yeah. talked about the nun. Not yet, not yet, not yet. She gets to come in and she gets to say hi. I think she, maybe not the dinner table, but I think she's having a drink with them. I do think the oh, nun. 100%. Gets yeah. 100%. She's there for cocktail hour, definitely. Okay, but Freddy okay. Faz, Fazbear, he's, yeah. he's, a, yeah. He he's got invited this year. Yeah. He Freddy Fazbear is putting his feet up, you know, and then oh, his yeah. feet are getting cut off because that's what they do. They goof around. <laughs> But um, and Chucky's in the high chair and Chucky's in the high chair, of course. <laughs> so the Thanksgiving Clayton and I are seeing it on Wednesday. So, mm -hmm. so you know, it, it could have some turkey legs for sure. We already got plans to see this. Is there an iconic killer in in this Thanksgiving? Do they possibly have something that people are going to get excited? Because the leg, the turkey legs will be there. If people are telling their friends, you got to see this Thanksgiving killer. So is that the case here? I do think there's potentially we have to see in mm -hmm. the future, see what the reaction is overall. There's potentially a new serial killer on our hands that people could get excited for. I, I think this was a pretty fun movie. So we'll, we'll see what everyone thinks. Wow. All right. I listen, we're excited to see it this week and $10 million. It it's fine. It and $15 for this million budget. Dollar budget. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. It's anything crazy. Yeah. No, Eli Eli Roth is is getting a you know he he's walking around town and people are saying good job good job, but and uh, uh, Patrick Dempsey, uh, people Patrick sexiest Dempsey? man alive, Christopher, good choice or bad choice? Good choice. I, I liked him in the movie. Thank you. Good. Nice. Good. Um, let's let's wrap up by going to what was your final movie? Next goal wins. I mean, this thing cried, macho cried effing macho. No. Didn't cry, cry macho. Cry macho is four point two. This is two point four. We got to figure out something else for this. I mean, this is like one of those Liam Neeson movies from the last few years. That's kind of like Marksman and, and all those movies. They open all around two point five. This is like the opening of of all of the like fall twenty twenty movies that would come out. You know, the Kevin Costner, uh, Grandpa, Give Me Back My Son movie, those type of things. Two point five million dollars i mean listen it's a movie that sat on the shelf for years christopher you said there was one other person in the screening what was it who was this person obviously don't give names anything that a listener could find them exactly but what type of person was sitting next to you it was a lady in her late 20s who actually walked out with like 
five to ten minutes left in the movie. Wow. Uh, she didn't could, even know what to see the last goal. I think she might have seen the last goal, but then after the last goal, okay. she was done. Got it. So she basically skipped the post-game interview. She didn't want to watch yeah, the press yeah. conference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could she possibly have been someone in a similar boat, Christopher, who she was in the final movie of an epic movie day and her butt just could not take it anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was there all day and I didn't see her. So as mm. far as I know, I don't think so. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, this is a bomb. Uh, I, there's a, there's a weird anti Taika Waititi, you know, sect online. And obviously there's a weird anti everything sect online, but I feel like Taika Waititi is getting, uh, a lot of specific hate. I, I don't think this movie negatively affects him in any way. The guy. Oh, I think you're so crazy, Pat. Really? I think he's done. Oh, he's well, absolutely done. done. He's, he's done. done. Yeah, he's done as a major filmmaker doing blockbuster movies 100%. I think oh, he can do maybe smaller level movies at this point. Oh, people he's are so over Star Wars project right now. Oh. Oh, he oh, and like wanted, those other Star wanted. Wars projects. <laughs> Wait, Pat, let me let me talk to to the boy here. All those know, other projects. I know, I know. I know. That went he through. Know. He's being cheeky. Chris, you know that, being cheeky. That Lindelof. I know, but listen. Yeah. I like the cheek. I do like it, but I had to cut the shit right there. I, I feel like next goal wins. People have just known this was going to bomb for a long time. It almost feels like a write off a career write off in that everyone's just saying you know just, what yeah i think it's humor what? just had an expiration date kind of like what claim was saying with ryan reynolds but like actually it's over at this point everyone's he's had yeah. his stick and everyone it's wow. the same thing pat this this guy is yahoo serious he's yahoo he's serious yahoo, right yahoo now yahoo serious never won a, a, a best screenplay oscar he didn't, they didn't give him a chance. It was a different time, Pat. <laughs> I, I, I definitely disagree in terms of, listen, Christopher, you might be right in that the audience has moved on from his humor. If he can't grow past what he has, has been doing, but I do not think Hollywood looks at Oscar winner, Taika Waititi, who's directed two Thor movies that both made Baffa Bobo Jojo Rabbit performed well at the box office for a movie of that size. I do not think Hollywood is done with this guy in any way, just based on this one bomb. You oh, know, but the I think, audience is done, Pat. The audience but, is done yeah. before Hollywood's done. Well, sure, but we I know think that, that for means, sure. Then I do. If that's the case, then I think that means you're going to see a couple of more big Taika Waititi bombs at the box office. But I don't think you're gonna see him. Well, then not he's be able over. Get movies, Pat. What I'm saying is he's over. I, that's what me I, and Christopher I, are saying is that yeah. he's done. You're saying he's gonna release bombs. That means he's done. I, I Christopher think he, has to go hang out. He got, he's got to go party. So we gotta. We gotta Christopher's gotta, got a hard out. So let's let's. You know what? We, we may continue this. Me and you, Clayton, in the after bo. We've got some things to go over in the after bo. So. Let's end this episode here. Christopher, do you have anything else that you need to say before you head out in terms of your epic movie day this weekend at the box office, anything like that? I plan on trying to have a movie double feature on Tuesday with uh, Napoleon and Saltburn. Wow. And one, one of my friends actually does want to come to Napoleon with me. So that's a great one. That's a great, yeah. that's going to be a great double feature. Yeah. Very yeah, exciting. Um, I love the way you're spending your holiday at home with the family, Christopher, which yeah. is going by <laughs> yeah. yourself or with friends to see movies for 10, 12 hours at a time. Yeah. Um, Christopher, any anything coming up that uh, listeners and viewers should look for on the B.O. Boys social channels, YouTube? You're doing a great job with the vertical videos there, you and Jack. And of course, Jack killing it over on our B.O. Boys Substack. So thank you for directing him so that Clayton never has to interact with Jack. Great job there. Uh, anything that we should look for coming up on BO boys media. Uh, just the same great content as always. Uh, maybe a little bit more boots on the ground reporting yes. but other than that. Yeah. Just the same, same great stuff. 
I love it. So, and maybe we'll get to some emails, Clayton, in the after BO. Of course, email us the BO Boys Podcast at gmail.com. Follow us at the BO Boys Pod on social media, run by, of course, Wanna BO Senior Intern Christopher. Read the Substack, Wanna BO Junior Intern Jack, doing a great job with new articles over there. And five stars at Apple Podcasts. And I think that's it, guys. I think we've done it. I don't think there's anything left to say. Me no. either. Except for. Until next time, we'll smell you at the box office. Nailed it.